Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to unboxing the Anoran A20737A Bluetooth low energy module along with the Atmosphere IDE. And originally when I was making this video, I was just gonna mention the BLE module in the title. The reason I felt like I had to put in the Atmosphere IDE is a lot of the value in this Bluetooth low energy platform is actually in the development environment. They've done some innovative things there and then we're going to talk about in this video. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so since this is an unboxing video, there is the box. Uh, it comes with the uh, A20737A development board. So here's the actual Bluetooth low energy module. This is the development board. It comes with some pin headers. It comes with a USB cable and uh, this retails for about, I think, $65, which you know, isn't cheap, especially for makers, but the development board, as we'll see, actually comes with a ton of sensors and peripherals and things like that, that that really add value to it. First, let's look at an overview of the A2737. So here it is pictured here on the right. It's, it's fairly small. They have sort of a PCB antenna version, and then they have an actual connector for a, an antenna mount. This uses a Broadcom uh, MCU that's based on a ARM architecture. So not only do you get the Bluetooth low energy, but you're actually getting a pretty capable MCU. 10-bit uh, ADC, different communication protocols, you know, SPI, I2C, serial, pulse width modulation, you know, general purpose digital ports. It also has a fairly low power sleep mode. I think it, when you're in sleep mode, you can get down below two microamps power draw. The single module costs about $14 US if you're buying one. If you buy, I think, large quantities, you can get it down to about $9, 9 or $10, which, once again, you know, and, and I'm guilty of this too, the maker community can be a little cheap. So $14 is a little steep compared to, you know, you could probably go on um, AliExpress and find a Bluetooth low energy module, probably half the price of that. But once again, a lot of the value is going to be in the development environment, as we'll see. And also, these modules are fully certified from different worldwide bodies, FCC if you're in the U.S. The fully certified, if you don't know what that means, if, if you're just going to use this for hobby purposes, that doesn't mean much. But if you plan on one day sort of commercializing your idea, the fully certified is nice because to get the certification of your design, it costs over $10,000. So they're already doing it for you. So you can kind of just put it on there and you already have this FCC certification. All right, let's look at the development board. So here is the development board. If you're trying to find the model number for the development board, it's just the A2737A-MSDK1. So there it is. Here's the development board, the front. Here's the actual module, pretty small. Then the development board has a bunch of different sensors and things like that. So uh, temperature sensor, compass, uh, what else is on here? RGB LED, you have this little joystick. It took me a while to figure out what this was when I was looking at the board before I had this label, but it's actually a buzzer. Then if we flipped, oh, and a, and a UR, a UR uh, programming chip, so you, you can just connect this to the USB connector on your computer and this is a USB to UART for uh, programming it. If you look at the back, we also have a battery coin cell battery holder, which is pretty cool. And I believe, I didn't try this out yet, but I think I saw an example program of how you can actually, they have something on here so you can actually measure the current draw of the BLE module itself. So there's an overview of the hardware, you know, the module as well as the development board you can buy with it on there. But one of the values I think of this platform is really in the IDE and they did some innovative stuff there. So this sort of gives an overview of the flow if you're creating a project. So if you're in the IDE, which I'm, I'm gonna show, but you're in the IDE, you build your project and they actually have a graphical programming interface. This IDE is hosted from a web browser. It gets compiled in the cloud. Then it creates two versions. So when you're building your, your program or your project, you're building the embedded code. So if you're an Arduino user like me, this would be your sketch. And then you're also building a smartphone app or a tablet app. And so you're building those both at the same time. And when you compile it and create it, you have your embedded program that you can load 
and you also have a app that you can load on your smart device. So that's one of the really cool things I think about this in environment. With that said, let's look at the uh, IDE in action. Okay, I lied. Before we get to the IDE, I wanted to show this uh, introductory web page. So here they talk about what is Atmosphere, and then you can actually go to the IDE. You do need to create an account and a login. There's also, they give you instructions to download an app to your phone. They have a lot of great resources. I haven't really checked out the forum, but they have a wiki, which I can show real quick. And in the wiki, they have a, a lot of details on how to get started. They have a ton of a different example projects. So a lot of good documentation to help you really get up and running quickly. The videos also show you some stuff. So let's go to the IDE. So here's the IDE. I don't have a project loaded in there right now. I'm going to load one of my projects. And I, the only two projects right now I have in here are example projects that I got from them. I, I changed them a little bit, but for the most part, they're the example ones. And here is one of the most basic example ones they have to get started. Yes, I do. So it's grabbing my one of my projects from the cloud. Here's another thing I noticed that uh, sometimes it takes a while to load and then they tell you to just refresh. Oh, there we go. So here's what we're gonna show. Okay, so here's our graphical programming area. This is actually our smart device interface and then we can actually look at the code, the real code that we're generating. So here in this toolbox, they have a, a bunch of different, I don't know if we wanna call them widgets, but a bunch of different widgets and one of them I pulled out is a button. And so when I pull out this button, it actually affects this button right here. So this creates this user interface piece. And then I can also look at the properties to the button. So I have it named as button. I have push it real good. If I want to do that, let's say in caps, you can see that uh, this is where it's coming out on because this is the user interface view for the smart device. This is the actual sort of programming piece. Then the other object I grabbed was a basically a, a GPIO pin. So if I go here, this is uh, tied to pin 27 on the board and tied to pin 27 is actually a green LED. So basically pushing this button is gonna to toggle uh, the, the GPIO pin. That's what this sort of piece means. And the way, so let me actually I'll delete this. So there's my connection, it's gone. So what I did here is I just click on there, run it there, and it creates this Bluetooth connection. And if I click on the connection or the connector, it actually has its own properties as well. So all we're doing though is we want this to push a button. We want something to happen over Bluetooth to communicate to the GPIO toggle and toggle that pin, pin 27. Then here is actually the code view. So for this simple example, you don't even have to get involved with the code, but you can kind of see that it also is generating real textual code. You can see here we have the function for the GPIO toggle. Here's my view, and then if I want to, I can then build my project Here's the console where it just sort of reports the, the status of the build. Okay, so my, my thing is done building. They then have a separate program you need to download. So here it is, the Atmosphere Programmer. So what happened is, is I compiled my code from my web browser. It went to their cloud, it compiled. But if I actually wanna now program the development board, I need to log into the programmer Here's my projects. I go down here. I'm going to set, select push it real good. Here are my COM ports. There's always two COM ports. They always say program with the lowest number one. I'm going to hit program and it's going to program it to my development board. Remember right now we're just adding it to the development board. There it goes and we're just about successful. In fact, we are done. Okay. Now let's see the, the board in action along with the app. Because remember, not only did we develop the embedded code, but we also developed the, the code or the app, I should say. So let me close the programmer and let's look at the video. Okay, here is my Anoran A20737A development board or development kit. You can see the, the BLE module, you can see everything else. 
I'm going to start the video. There we are. And then I'm going to back away and we're going to see the app for the first time. So let me get a good. So before I get into the app, so you download this app, you have your own login, the same login that you have for the development environment. You've used that to log in. Now I will note, see this demo button? The board comes preloaded with a demo uh, embedded code as well as a demo app. Right out of the box, you can get started and the demo app just allows you to sort of view the compass. It allows you to change the RGB LED and things like that just so you can kind of see everything's working. Here, I'm going to uh, log in to bring up the app you just saw. So there it is. So you can see my button up here, push it real good. Right now I'm going to press the settings button. Then I'm going to press scan. And then my, my device comes up that I want to connect to. So right there I'm connecting to the module or the development board. I'm now connected. So I, I pan over there. Now I'm going to press the button. Now notice this LED on the top of my knuckle went on after I pressed the button. So you're going to see me press the button on and off and you can see it's turning the LED on and off. So pretty simple example just to get up and started, but real easy to do. And remember the value here is fairly easy intuitive programming interface to use with the visual diagrams, but you're generating an app as well as the embedded code. Okay, a couple last things I wanna mention before I finish is they do have a serial monitor capability. So if you're familiar with Arduino, the serial monitor is a great sort of debugging tool. They tell you to download a, a free serial model called uh, TerraTerm, and that'll connect, and you can actually feed serial data to it to kind of see the output if you want to use it as a debugging tool. Also, what's worth mentioning is you might be like, well, for these apps, you know, when I create the smart device apps, it really just downloads into the Anoran app. And what if I want to have my own app be standalone? So I did look into that because that's to me critical. Uh, they use some type of tool called Cordova and they have a video on this where they actually show you how to generate a standalone app from your code. Now, one of the comments I read on it is the standalone app has a lot of the same look and feel as the Anoran app. Now, can you go in even deeper into Cordova or something like that and, and edit it further? I don't know, but they do have a method to generate a standalone app. I have not tried it yet. I, I plan to try it in the future, but I thought that was important to note. Okay, that's it for unboxing the Anoran A2737A BLE module, as well as what I think is the innovative or the one of the high value portions of this platform, the Atmosphere IDE. And if you couldn't already tell, you know, from my initial overview and usage of it, I really like it. I give it a thumbs up. I recommend it if you want to do a BLE project with an app. I hope to explore this more. Maybe in the future, I'll look in at creating my own board to host the module and also maybe doing some more advanced stuff with, with the apps. Anyway, if you have any comments to add to this, please use the comment section. And thank you for watching.